Hello and welcome to Canterbury Live. Monday the 30th of June. We've met the end of the month. Unbelievable 1st of July tomorrow. Well, on the weekend we headed to Wellington to watch the Crusaders play the Canes. Yeah, not such a great result, but very cool at half time. The Party of Māori Group performed Poyer because it is actually 30 years since they first um, came out with that song. So pretty cool. And uh, here's a clip. Take it down memory lane. ago. Unbelievable. We're just showing our age probably for those that can remember. Well coming up on today's show we're joined by Mr Phil Bagshaw telling us all about the Canterbury Charity Hospital and it's Monday so we have the traffic update. But first up we actually recap um, with Rich from Here Area Landscapes thanks to Garden Makers some tips and all the best tricks that we've taken out of the series over the last few weeks. So let's t take a seat and have a look at Rich now. Once again, huge um, emphasis on preparation. Digging your hole the right size, um, having your hedge measured out and spaced, as you'll see Caleb there with the tape measure measuring out and spacing his hedging. A, when your hedge grows together, you'll get um, equal growth from your hedge and you won't end up with it being um, overplanted in certain areas and underplanted in other areas. Applying um, no oil or no stain to your deck will require no maintenance of your deck and applying an oil will give your timber a longer life. You should expect at least 15 years of life from your deck. By enhancing it with an oil or a stain you may expand that life out to 20-25 years. Um, so here you'll see Tim is going to drill some pilot holes for this timber. Now the reason behind drilling a pilot hole is it'll um, put no pressure on the timber, allowing um, the timber not to expand and no uh, no splitting. So what you'll find in um, in Canterbury in the heat of the sun and the wind is if we don't drill pilot holes and drive nails through, we're uh, put, applying pressure to the timber, which will allow the timber to split. Um, tending to care for it, lawn will grow underground as it does above the ground. So as long as your lawn is a finger length above the ground, you're going to have a, a rooting system under the ground that's similar to the same length. The stronger your root system is under the ground, the less chance you have of getting clover uh, and weeds coming through in your lawn. Once again, treat your lawn like your, your vehicle, give it a warrant of fitness, minimum twice a year. The reason we use matte sealant is it enhances the colour 
uh, ease of cleaning, we can hose them off, but also during winter, if we use a matte sealant, it'll stop them from becoming an ice skating rink, which would happen if we used a gloss sealant. So using paving as an entry into your house is, is a huge enhancement as compared to um, putting straight concrete, and it also enhances the driveway by adding it on. We've got two different products here. We've got the small Teddington chip and the natural paving. And natural paving is a great product for locking together stones and aggregate. Um, today we're using it with the chip. Uh, comes in a few different colours, uh, light grade, uh, light colour for a lighter chip or stone and dark for um, darker products. Um, it's got a, a matting on it which is used as a weed mat and also um, allows for drainage of water to go through. There's a couple of different, sorry, three different grades. Uh, you've got a walkway grade which we've got here today, uh, we've got a car grade and truck grade, so safe to drive on. Um, the design helps you use less stone um, and works well with, with chip and pebbles uh, from a range from I think it's about 13 to 19 mil. So Rich, you're not going to lean on that all day, are you? Good on your neck. <laughs> so it's as easy as that. So don't forget, if you need any tips on landscaping, the two places you need to see is first, Area Landscapes, thanks to Richard, or Garden Makers, a great team, they work well together. Stay with us after the break, we find out all about the Canterbury Charity Hospital. Every Saturday evening at 8 o'clock, we screen a riveting and educational documentary, ranging from history to music, culture to religion, and everything in between. Saturday night documentary, 8 o'clock, right here on CTV. It's Canterbury. Blackwalls has a proud history presenting leading vehicle brands, extensive backup and service for a total one-stop driving experience. Holden, Mazda and HSV new and used vehicle sales, servicing, parts, paint and panel, Isuzu truck sales and service, all together in one convenient location. More selection, more value, more quality and more reasons to make Blackwalls your number one choice. Visit Blackwalls today, call the Waterloo Racecourse Road, Sockburn or online at blackwalls.co.nz. Come dine with Country Catering at the Kaipui Golf Club Cafe. Enjoy our range of delicious $10 lunches, daily specials and other homemade goodies. Open to the public seven days inside the Kaipui Golf Club. North end of William Street, Kaipui. We look forward to seeing you soon. Avoid the monkeys when it comes to relocating. Trust A1 Movers, a family business since 1993 that guarantees a professional job every time. We carefully handle and wrap your valued items, ensuring they have a safe journey. Secure storage and insurance options are also available. A1 Movers, the careful, caring, moving company. Oi! Hi, I'm Caitlin, the naturopath here at Staywell Pharmacy. Working with the pharmacist, I use herbal and nutritional medicine to recommend natural alternatives for your health. This can be to counteract any side effects of your medication, general health advice, or natural options for you and your family. I'm also available for consultations. So come in and see us at Staywell Pharmacy. 27 Shand Road, Hornby. Staywell Pharmacy, live well, stay well. Southern Newsweek is an Otago-based news bulletin. Produced locally in Dunedin, it's your chance to catch up on everything that's happening in the community. Southern Newsweek, Saturday at 6.30pm and repeated Sunday at 10am, right here on CTV. Our community in Canterbury is made up of some very special people that uh, give their professional services sometimes free of charge just to give back and one of those gentlemen that was behind the Canterbury Charity Hospital is with me now and that's Mr Philip Bagshaw. Welcome to Canterbury Live. Hi. Thank you so much for making the time because your time is precious, <laughs> isn't it really? Well, pretty much, yes. Yeah. Let's uh, Tell us, um, if we don't know um, of watching today, what is the Canterbury Charity Hospital? 
Well, it's an organisation that's uh, supported by uh, donations from the public and it's run by volunteers. We only have two full-time equivalent staff. Everybody else is a volunteer. And we treat anybody who's been refused treatment by the public hospital and who can't afford to pay for private care, basically. Why would they be uh, refused? Well, these days, the public hospital doesn't treat everything. Um, it treats everything acute. Mm. If you get knocked down or you have acute abdominal pain or something, they'll take you. But a number of elective things they don't do anymore. So they don't do hernias and things like that like they used to do. So now those people either have to pay or go without. <clears throat> and how do you receive the referrals from patients? They all come from their GPs. Right. Uh, in fact, the only exception to that is we, do, we, do, we now have a dental service and they are referred by their dentists. So, uh, but everybody else is referred by a doctor. Fantastic. So how many surgeons do you have on board? At the moment, I think there are about 17. Um, That's incredible. Most of them local, but some from around the country. We have a chap who comes down from Hawke's Bay, another one who comes up from uh, Southland, uh, a Nelson surgeon comes here. Yep, so we have quite a few from out of town as well. Stating the obvious, but um, well, you know more than anyone as a surgeon, you're always in demand. That's it. So what makes these wonderful people go up their time to actually come and support you and the team? Oh, I think, I think this, the Canterbury is really well placed to do this. It's a small enough community for people to have ownership, but big enough for it to generate the funds and the interest to support it. And uh, there are a lot of people here who think that everyone should have free health care if they really need it. Mm. And the public system can't always provide that anymore. So we're trying to fill in the gap. You must have seen so many changes over the years with the public health system. Yeah, over 33 years, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is the feedback you're getting back from the patients that you help? And the families you help? Oh, well, we get very good feedback. We get a lot of support from them. People often come back and do things for us or, or join the volunteer team or whatever. Um, but uh, yes, I think people feel that uh, there's something, there's a backstop in case they can't get the treatment they need um, through the public system. And you're not judgmental, are you? There's no one, no cross eyes looking at someone? No, the only thing is we we get people to admit whether they can afford to pay or not. If they can afford to pay, we say no, you, you'd better pay. <laughs> we, we, we try to fit in the gap, really, mm. between what the public provides and what the private provides. We don't try to pinch from either of those. We fill the people who, f who fill in the gap between. Be the happy middleman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's best not to pinch from either of those two groups. So, You touched on the volunteers. They're a very, very important part of yes. the Canterbury Charity Hospital. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, about the volunteers you have? Well, at the moment there are 285 of them and they do all sorts of things. We have the volunteer health professionals, doctors, nurses, um, dentists, uh, counsellors, things like that. Then we have a lot of other people who provide all sorts of other services, like we have people who do the administration, people who do the fundraising, we have people who do the garden. Um, there's everything. Uh, so all the services basically are provided by volunteers. Are you always looking for more volunteers? Yes, we're always looking for volunteers who can provide jobs like that. I mean, it's surprising. People often hear about us and go away and think what they can do and come back and say, well, I can't afford to give you any money, but I could do this or that or the other. Um, Tremendous, uh, through resources. Yes. Yeah. Fundraising, you touched on that. I believe you just had a recent uh, concerto, a piano concerto. Yes, we had a group from the States who came and played uh, uh, for us. Um, and uh, unfortunately, we had a very s small lead in time, so we couldn't advertise it very well, but uh, it brought in some money for us, which was good. Always next time. Well, money is the key. No matter how romanticised we do get about it, you do need it to function. So how can we support you in that respect? Well, you can look, you can see us on the website. Uh, we have a, kind of a website, uh, cherryhospital.org.nz. You can go there. Uh, you can join and have us uh, email you our regular newsletter. There are all sorts of ways you can find out about how uh, you can help. 
either physically or financially. Philip, you have a wonderful board. What is what can they see as the next step for the Canterbury Charity Hospital? Well, we uh, we always have things we want to do. One of the things that um, we would love to be able to do is offer overnight care. Okay. We have a lot of. We're at the moment we're only registered to do day care. People must go home in the evening. Um, and a lot of people need an overnight care, often because they don't have a carer at home or something like that mm -hmm. to look after them after they go home. So we would very much like to provide that, but at the moment we don't have the resources to do that. Oh, well, you always have something to work on, don't you? And you yes. never know, there could be someone watching that may just know the way they can get to it. So thank you very much. I wish you all the very best. It's a fantastic charity here in Canterbury. Um, one thing I'd like to ask you, what's one wish you'd have for the hospital in the future? If you had a magic wand, what would that be? Oh gosh, um, well I wish we were financially sustainable um, so we didn't have to spend a lot of time doing fundraising. But the one wish I really ha would have is that the public system was able to provide comprehensive health care and then we could close the door and uh, I could go and play with my grandchildren. <laughs> That's not a bad wish at all. <laughs> Thank you very much Mr Bagshaw for not coming in today. Not at all. Now after the break it is Monday and we have the traffic update. Tiki Tour, Tiki Tour, Tiki Tour. Kia ora. Hey, my name's Victoria. And my name is Nana. Climb aboard the Tiki Tour bus and join in on all the fun. Every Saturday at 8 here on CTV. Kagite. Enjoy the show. My son's helped me greatly with my independence now that I've got more mobility. Mum, I've been looking into stand assist chairs for more mobility. They recline back with a footrest, then when you want to get out of them, they stand you up. You can even sleep on them. More Mobility can bring one out for a free trial. There's even electric beds too. What do you think? For more range and more expert advice, see More Mobility, corner Clarence and Princess Streets off Blenheim Road. What a difference More Mobility makes. Pestrel has the latest technology that repels rats and mice and even helps control cockroaches. Covers walls, ceilings and open spaces. Combines electromagnetic, ultrasonic and ionic technologies. Harmless to pets and people, just plug it in. Order your Pestrel rodent free today. Now $149.90 plus courier. Order within 20 minutes and get it courier free. Call 0800 88 88 44 or go to pestrel.co.nz. Tomorrow Today is your science program, presenting a comprehensive overview of the latest trends in science and research. Tomorrow Today, Tuesday night at 7.30pm, right here on CTV. Today traffic update is a little special. We have Ryan Cooney, who's the manager of CTOC, which is the Christchurch Transport Operations Centre. He's joined by Skirt, and they're to tell us all about the role in the rebuild and redevelopment in the city centre. Ryan Cooney here, manager of the Christchurch Transport Operations Centre. Today I'm here with Angus Barge, who is the Transport Planning Manager for the Stronger Christchurch Infrastructure Rebuild Alliance. So Skirt is the uh, major provider of all horizontal infrastructure during this rebuild. One day, Angus, if you could tell us a little bit about the types of activities that Skirt's involved in. Absolutely. So Skirt was tasked with rebuilding the horizontal infrastructure after the 2011 earthquakes. So horizontal infrastructure generally refers to the three waters network, so that's the wastewater, the water supply and the stormwater network, as well as the roads themselves, so all repairs to, to roads, as well as bridges and returning walls and uh, some reservoirs as well. So anything that really goes along the flat horizontal infrastructure of the town. So Angus, there's a lot of infrastructure to be rebuilt as part of the rebuild process. Uh, can you tell us uh, a little bit about what drives the timing and sequencing of your work? Uh, absolutely. So the two questions that we get asked most frequently are why can't we go faster in this process and, and the other one is why can't we slow down. Now in terms of why can't we slow down, we, the, the, the main driving factor in that is that we need to complete our work in times, well for the, ho the whole of the horizontal infrastructure by 2016, but when we look at areas like the central city we really need to be out of there by the time that the vertical projects, that's the anchor projects and the council projects really need to take hold. So our timing really is, is sequenced 
around, being out of the way um, in order for that to take hold. Now, the, the question is, why can't we go any faster? Well, really, this is a, a, a long process, taking us to, through to the end of 2016. We have about 120 crews out on the network, and we need to make sure that their timing is balanced across everything that needs to be rebuilt. So a lot of planning goes into it. We've obviously had to change a lot of the way in which we work, processes, uh, requirements, etc. Um, so we talked last week about CTOC and some of the, the things we've been up to with the Ford Works Bureau and uh, various groups to assess, uh, assess the programs. Can you tell us a little bit about what skirt has been up to in terms of trying to manage the transport impacts of its program? Well, absolutely, and this is back to the question about how fast can we go, because we understand that if we go too fast, we create lots of congestion on the network, and it really is a balance about doing our work as fast and as productively as we can, and obviously managing your network as, as, as well as you can. Um, so on that time, we plan our work as actively as we can, but we recognise we're just one piece in the jigsaw. There are other people who impact the network. So we have a, a good coordination role with other rebuild programmes such as the CCDU and private developers. So our real emphasis is on planning our work, but also liaising with others who are, who are active on the network around the town, the hospital and CCDU private developers. So the key areas that are affected, or where there's changes this week, are uh, out at the Sumner Road access road. Uh, the Sumner Road is going to be closed completely, uh, which will mean that there's a detour um, off around Beachville Road. The other two areas of interest are Armagh Street and Gloucester Street. Uh, there's works that are converting both of these to one way. Uh, New Regent Street will be available, uh, will be accessible during this time, however. So suggest that you head to the transport for Christchurch.govt.nz website to find further details around that. So just wrap up by saying thank you very much Angus to um, participating today and, and filling us in on some of the uh, gaps around uh, how Skirt delivers its program and in the impacts on the transport system. And also just a reminder to people to uh, please don't block intersections, it helps keep our network moving. Thanks Angus and Ryan, it's great to get those updates every Monday. Well thank you very much for joining me today, Monday the 30th of June. Stay with us now, Lisa Jordan is sharing with us the CTV prize draw.